Hello and welcome to my guide for getting a 147 break in Hustle Kings. Start an offline play game, an exhibition match. Um, obviously you want the game type snooker. Uh, difficulty doesn't really matter massively, but you may find it easier on easy. Aiming line should be long. Shot timer should be none, so that you're not pressurised by the shot clock. And when it comes to choosing who to play against, play against a friend. Somebody who won't try to pot any of the balls. That will make it a lot easier for you to get started. And uh, playing against yourself is probably the easiest, most practical way of achieving that. And it means that you don't have to bore a friend. The other main consideration is don't use the move controller. The move controller doesn't give you the ability to set exactly the right power. And we're going to need to be able to set precise power to make all of the shots required. Start off by taking a break, and it really doesn't matter how you split the pack. Only thing to notice is check the position of the black ball, um, and uh, oh yeah, make sure that the person who's potting the first red is you, and not player two, otherwise it won't count in your favour. Now here I'm checking the black ball from all angles. It will pot nice and easily into that corner pocket, so I'm ready to go. Line up my shot. Check it in the overhead view, and everything looks fine. Add a little bit of power, I'm going to try and get myself a nice position on the black. To get a 147 break, you need to pot red, black, red, black, red, black, in all 15 reds and 15 blacks. So the other colours are actually just impediments at this stage. And here I've gone and got myself snookered on the one ball that I need to pot. But that's not a problem with the long aiming line. Uh, the long aiming line gives you the ability to see exactly what happens, even off a cushion, as long as you put the power up high enough. So here I am, setting up a shot that will pot the black, make doubly sure that that's going to go in, use all the views that are available to you. If you go into the um, ball cam view, you can actually line right up on the shot that you're going to take, and you can see the line, that the, the path that the ball is going to take and be certain that that's going to go in the pocket as long as you strike accurately. Accuracy is quite key. Obviously if you miss cue at any point, uh, you're likely to miss your shot. So only attempt to make a 147 break if you are capable of making 36 shots in a row without miss cueing. If you can't do that, then I suggest you practice. Now each time I take a shot, um, I'm attempting to figure out the angles so that I can line up the black for the next shot. It will obviously help if you have some experience in snooker or pool so that you can figure out where the cue ball is going to end up after you pot each red. Other tips, if your cue ball is very, very close to the cushion, increase the top spin so you can view down the ball more easily. And if you don't want to play the shot with top fin, you can always hit square again to reset the spin. Take advantage of that ball cam view so that you can look at exactly where the object ball is going to go. Change the angle slightly and then go back to the ball cam view and see how that affects your shot. It really is, especially with the long aiming line, very, very easy to make most of your pots. The only thing to be aware of is that you get the power exactly right. When you're hitting a ball into a pocket at any angle, you'll find that as you change the amount of power you put on, the, the angle that the object ball moves at is actually changed slightly. The harder your shot, uh, the more exaggerated the angle uh, will be. So you can't, for example, line up a shot with maximum power and then expect it to go exactly where you want it to when you reduce the power. So try, if at all possible, to make sure that even when you're playing gentle shots you can see where the object ball is going and you can follow its path straight to the pocket. A lot of people with a long aiming line will play most of their shots with full power. 
I can't really recommend this. If you can get away with playing softer shots, you'll have a lot more control over the cue ball. You'll have more chance of getting the black um, lined up for your next shot, for example. And the other thing to remember is chalk your cue regularly. There is a small disadvantage to putting chalk on your cue, and that is that the number of Hustle King credits that you get for making the shot is halved. Uh, but frankly, they're really quite unimportant. Um, the Hustle King credits are good for betting against people in online games, and I think there's a trophy for having won 100 million credits. Um, but in terms of the number of credits you win in one game compared to the amount of credits that you can get um, by hustling or by playing the career mode in the game, uh, I wouldn't worry too much about the loss of a few hundred credits um, when you're playing a shot just by queuing, just by chalking a queue. I personally tend not to chalk my queue very often. Uh, I got used to not chalking it. Um, when you're trying for a 147 break, there's no reason, as I say, not to. If you've bought special chalks, uh, you might feel like using them to enhance your shots. Um, people don't like using the special chalks online, they give you increased accuracy. But obviously in this sort of offline one player game, the only person you're offending is, is yourself. So go for it. As I've been talking away, I've been playing the game, you'll notice there that I just lined up on the black into the pocket and then I reduced the power. Uh, so I had to readjust my angle again. There we go. Just keep hitting R2 to switch between the views. Make a little change, hit R2 a couple of times to go to the ball cam, uh, check the position, press R2 again, move left or right slightly, press R2 a couple more times to check the ball cam again, and get into a habit of doing that. You can get quite quick at it, um, and it becomes possible to uh, line up all your shots fairly quickly, uh, certainly if they're fairly close. And by zooming in and lining up, you don't even need to see very much of the uh, the line fo following out of the object ball to be able to determine whether a ball will pot or not. If you're not very familiar with the snooker table's pockets, I should say these are very, very unforgiving. You can't uh, risk hitting the near cushions as you can in the pool games. Um, try to avoid hitting the cushions at, at all. As I say, practice. Um, will always help you get to a feel for how much leeway you have with the pockets just by playing and playing and playing and seeing which shots go in and which bounce out. One thing to be wary of when playing very hard shots is if you put a significant amount of spin on, um, the, the hard shots will often bounce out of the pockets. Fortunately, with the long aiming line, you can often tell if the ball is going to bounce out of the pocket because you can actually see the line going into the pocket and then coming back out again. Here we are. I've potted 10 of the reds so far. And... Sorry, that's not the right. Ah, I've potted 9 of them. There's one red right on the cushion there. So far, I've ignored it. You can, with the long aiming line, pot most balls from anywhere on the table, even when they're flat on the cushions. Um, but in order to maintain as much control as possible over my shots, I prefer to try to knock a ball off the cushion if possible um, as part of another shot. Not that that's always possible, but uh, it's a good thing to get into a habit of doing, especially... Um, when you start using a short aiming line or get rid of the aiming lines altogether, um, potting a, a ball along a cushion in snooker is actually very, very difficult. So here I am trying to line up a shot that will actually dislodge the red from the cushion. Let's see if I can do it. Oh yes. Perfect. 
<laughs> I think I got quite lucky there. Here we go. I'll often zoom right in on a ball, especially when I'm uh, trying to minimise the power. Uh, just make you can line up the ball with the pocket, uh, and then you can elevate the the viewing angle so you're virtually directly overhead, and you can still know whether or not the ball is going to go into the pocket because the aiming line should be coming absolutely directly out of the top of it. That's a neat little trick. Works really well with the uh, short aiming line as well when you don't have as much line to go on. Here I've decided <laughs> I can pot the black directly, but it will probably send the cue ball miles away, possibly get stuck in the bulk area. So I'm going to play a shot that I would never play against a real opponent. I'm going to take advantage of that aiming line and pot the black in off a cushion. And that will make sure that I keep the cue ball back at the uh, top of the table where the reds are. I would be terribly embarrassed to play that shot against a real opponent just because it's scandalously cheating really. It's, a, it's an abuse of the uh, aiming line system if you ask me. Frankly it's a miracle that uh, you can see the aiming line uh, after the cue balls come off the cushion. And the fact that you can see the aiming line even in the overhead view and the ball cam view as I'm about to show you really does make it easy. But then sometimes it's quite fun to be a super professional snooker player who can score one four seven break. Here's one thing I could show you about the aiming line. If um, if you play a ball off a cushion the ball will curve off the cushion as the spin that's imparted on it gives way to the normal roll of the ball and that can make it very difficult to line up a shot. There I think that's probably going to go into the middle pocket but I can't be sure. So if I instead um, play the cue ball off the cushion then the cue ball may be spinning away slightly but the object ball will go in a nice straight line. So there's a tip for you. If you're playing them off cushion it's better to play I think what, what are called kick shots where the cue ball hits the cushion first rather than bank shots where the object ball hits the cushion first. Down to the last three reds. Still a long way to go. Here's another interesting shot. I want to play this with a lot of screw, a lot of backspin, because the if I play it with topspin, the cue ball's just going to get stuck in the jaws of that pocket. If I play at a normal angle, because I'm hampered somewhat by the uh, cushion, the cue ball will jump into the air. But if I raise the cue angle and play with quite a lot of power, I can what's called I can masse this shot, and it's a great way of applying a lot of backspin onto a relatively uh, slow moving cue ball. You have to add a lot of power to compensate for that. Um, but it's a technique you'll see a lot of people playing online um, as much as anything because it doesn't seem to impart as much speed onto the object ball therefore the object ball is less likely to jump out of the pocket. Here you'll see I was looking at that red into the corner but I have decided that I prefer to knock it into the middle pocket and the reason for that is simply to keep the cue ball in the vicinity of the black. If I'd knocked it into the corner pocket, the cue ball would have gone straight up into the bulk area of the table. And uh, if my terminology is at all confusing, the bulk area is of course the area where the yellow, brown and blue are, sorry, the red, yellow, green and brown, and in this instance the pink, as the pink is out of its usual position. Got myself into a snooker again, and at this stage, uh, you know, in real life, <laughs> You just have to accept that you weren't going to get a 147 this time, but I'm impatient, so here we go, off the cushion again. Check and double check everything carefully. And it's all too easy. And there, I've got a century, 104 points. 
and I'm lined up nicely on that red into the middle. Put plenty of backspin on to bring the cue ball back to the black. It's these kind of shots where I usually like to play the shot as gently as possible. Played at um, even at medium pace, this is going to send the cue ball miles away from that red. You can also help to slow it down somewhat by putting backspin on, not too much backspin, uh, just a stun effectively. Even so, this is going to go some way away from the red, but with the long aiming line, that looks like a fairly straightforward shot. So finally on the last red, just using the overhead view to check the basic angle and using the ball cam view, determine that I'm not quite lined up. Adjust things a little more, line up with the pocket, zoom in and then go into the overhead view. I can immediately see that's not going straight up. That's more like it. Chalk. And thankfully just missed that middle pocket. Now, this one's possibly going to be the trickiest shot. I've got to get from the black up to the yellow. After you pot it the uh, last red, you pot the black, and then it, you have to go through the balls in sequence, yellow, green, brown, blue, pink, and then black again. And I'm thinking... If I can get up behind the yellow, I'll have a better shot. Because the pink is obviously blocking the yellow into its nearest pocket. Now this one's going to be a little awkward. So I'll line this one up very carefully into the middle pocket. If you're feeling brave, you could even line this up into a corner pocket. At the far end of the table. But that, the further you hit it, the harder it is to judge whether that's going exactly right. So I'm going to avoid that corner possibility at the moment. Playing with as little power as I think I can get away with. Don't want the cue ball to do too much. It's just making tiny adjustments and then going back to the ball cam to see the effect of those adjustments. And away we go. It's all looking good at this point. In fact, you know at this point <laughs> better than I do that this is actually all going to be successful because I wouldn't have uploaded it if I got a one, two, five break, uh, for example. You know from the fact that it's on YouTube that this is going to be a one, four, seven break. At the time that I'm playing these shots, I'm not so sure, but it all looks like it's going to be fairly plain sailing from now. Nice edge on the brown. Bit of backspin to bring it back down for the blue. Landed pretty straight on the blue, but then it looks like there's a fairly straightforward pot on the pink if I just keep the cue ball roughly in the middle spot. Line up with full power to get the basic angle. And drag the power back somewhat. I'm going to play this with a lot of backspin. I really don't want the pink jumping out. That would be catastrophic at this stage. And that looks pretty good. Finally, do remember to click play on rather than call frame, because if you call frame, you'll only have a 140 break and no gold trophy. Everything looks straightforward. Don't blow it now. Don't try to do anything too clever. Just play a nice, straightforward shot. And there you go. I have a 147 break. I hope that's helpful to somebody. If nothing else, it shows you what it's like to actually play the game, as opposed to all the replays that you can see online. This is the uh, in-game view of me lining up my shots and playing them. Anyway, thanks very much for watching.